Always We ask the questions. Peter Faith je rođen 1945. godine u Holandiji. Nakon 25 godišnjeg iskustva u diplomatskoj službi svoje zemlje, obavio je i različite zadatke u NATO i sekretarijatu Saveta Evropske unije. 2008. godine Međunarodna upravljačka grupa za Kosovo poverila mu je mandat. Peter Faith postaje međunarodni civilni predstavnik za Kosovo. Njegov zadatak je bio da otvrđuje da li vlada Kosova sprovedi sveobuhvatni predlog za rešenje statusa Kosova. Po ustavu Kosova, Faith je imao korektivne izvršne nadležnosti na Kosovu. Međunarodna upravljačka grupa nedavno je donala odluku da zatvori civilnu kancelariju. Time je okončan i mandat Peter Faitha. Mr. Faith, thank you very much for being our guest today. It's a pleasure to have you in our show. Thank you very much. Supervised independence has ended, but the challenges still remain. Did Kosovo institutions implement um, their obligations under the Atisari plan? The term that was used uh, by the states that recognize and support Kosovo uh, together in the International Steering Group was that the uh, plan was substantially implemented. That is, not 100%, and fully also recognizing that there are uh, challenges remaining, as you say. And these relate, uh, first of all, to the north of Kosovo. And secondly, I would say, to the economic social situation in this country. Let's start with the north. Looking back, what could have been done differently? That's a good question. I don't think that um, there were many alternatives, um, given that Serbia and uh, Pristina had uh, diametrically opposite uh, views on status of Kosovo, first of all, um, and secondly on um, inclusion of the issue in a dialogue. Uh, the dialogue started uh, with technical issues but has not yet reached uh, the, the, the more political level that uh, can be uh, the case now in the autumn when the European Union is moving into, into that direction. The, um, the other thing is that uh, the North is uh, very much controlled by uh, hardline leaders. Um, there is intimidation, there, is, there are threats, there is no freedom of movement. And it is very difficult for not only for the internationals, and not only for soldiers of NATO who have been shot at, as you know, and even be wounded, for the international police, EU legs, but also for um, Albanian citizens to have access to the north. So that that's complicates the, the issue quite a bit. From where do, did these threats come from? Are the structures in the north organized? Are there criminal structures? Are there politically motivated structures? from where the threats are coming from? To I, think, I think 95% of the North um, is populated by law-abiding citizens and I think that a very large majority of these citizens are not happy with the current uh, situation, are not uh, happy with barricades limiting their movements with uh, the oppressive uh, at atmosphere. I think they would like to move on, uh, but there is a, a 5 to 10 percent fringe that um, is controlling smuggling, uh, illicit operations, uh, trafficking, um, and who have very uh, strong views about the North um, not um, being integrated in, into uh, the remainder of Kosovo. There were attempts from the Kosovo government to send their police forces in the north and perhaps bring some sort of stability to the north as well. Um, did, they help, did that help the process or not? It, you may say that it didn't help the process, but it helped Pristina. And sometimes in history it shows that um, rather bold actions, and it was a very daring action, and it could have ended in disaster. Nevertheless, for Pristina, and we're talking about July 25 last year, for Pristina it gave a political uh, gain. That is, from that moment on, uh, there is a, uh, a limited presence 
of uh, Kosovo Police and Custom, uh, Customs uh, Service at the border crossing points. So you and I may think that this was destabilizing and there were, there were uh, condemnations, but I refrained from uh, making a, a clear cut uh, uh, statement on this because I, I realized that at some point uh, for Pristina, this was necessary to come to the negotiating table with a level playing field. What about the international community? Did they make efforts to integrate the north of Kosovo into Kosovo institutions? Certainly, um, and, uh, but the international community um, uh, and some of the uh, friends of Kosovo, the United States, um, others uh, in Europe who uh, support Kosovo take the position that it's up to the Kosovo government uh, itself to assume responsibility. So what was done over the past period was to um, help Kosovo uh, conceptualize what needs to be done in the north, uh, to think of um, the full range of, of issues that, that you need to think of to um, regain uh, governance control. That is, um, first of all, to uh, make an attractive offer to the uh, sub-community in the north uh, so that the, the people, that you can win the hearts and minds of the people and the people would feel more comfortable with um, the uh, Pristina institutions. Then social economic development and then of course uh, restoring freedom of movement and, and the rule of law. And this has culminated in the opening of, of offices uh, two years ago, an office for uh, services to the citizens, and now an office in, that was opened in, in May, which can be seen as the nucleus of a municipal uh, office or a municipal authority in Mitrovica North. Uh, I visited the office and when I was there, there were not so many citizens using the services, barely because the municipal leaders in the north have stated several times that whoever goes to seek services in these municipalities, is in these administrative offices, will be considered as a, as, as a traitor. How do you see where the change from these leaders could come in order to become more constructive and to be integrated in Kosovo society. Can that moment be envisaged in the near future? Well, two things. First of all, the statistics that we have uh, show that there is increasing interest among the uh, Mitrovica North citizens to avail themselves of these uh, uh, services. And, and the office has steadily seen a, an increasing number of uh, customers coming for various, various services. But then again, you have the rhetoric of the hardline uh, leadership there. Um, in my view, it, it's clear that uh, not only has Pristina uh, limited the factor control of the north, but also that the citizens are looking more towards Belgrade than to uh, Pristina. That is a, a given that needs to be uh, uh, clear to everybody. But that can change. Um, it can change on both sides. I think, first of all, the government here, as I've said, needs to reach out to the citizens, needs to extend a, a hand of friendship and reconciliation, needs to give an attractive offer, much as the, the government here has done with the Serb community south of the river Ibar, by establishing new municipalities, by offering um, um, opportunities for uh, employment, by offering greater uh, security, and that has been, to a large extent, uh, successful. And that has to happen in the north as well. On the other side, I would uh, would hope that Belgrade can make a contribution to this whole process by um, informing the uh, hardliners in the north that um, there are other priorities. And in fact, already now I see that the. Belgrade agenda is different from the hardline North Kosovo agenda. For Belgrade there is a European perspective that is going to be taken into account. And anything that stands in the way of Serbia moving closer to the European Union is something that is um, um, a problem. 
For the hardliners, this is less of a problem because they would like to maintain the status quo. Um, and many of them are involved in, in operations uh, where there is material benefit. Do you see a sincere commitment from the Kosovo side to integrate the North into Kosovo institutions? Have they done everything they could? I'm talking about the government of Kosovo so far. I think, I, I think no. I think uh, more could have been done earlier, uh, absolutely. And um, we are still in a, in a, um, in a situation where uh, much of the action has to do with uh, law and order, uh, barricades, refusal, hardline rhetoric. So I have, I have, um, I have encouraged the government over the past year and, and maybe years to become more imaginative in reaching out uh, to, the, to the north. And I think there are ideas that you can think of that, would, that could help. Instead of waiting for these big solutions to come from the sky, what can people in the region do to make a better life for themselves? Well, the main problem, and now we come to the other uh, issue that I mentioned, is uh, the lack of employment and the social economic conditions. This is a, a serious problem, not only for Kosovo, but also elsewhere in the Balkans. But Kosovo has, has two handicaps that, that it needs to grapple with. One is uh, it cannot integrate uh, properly in the um, region and the technical structures uh, for cooperation as long as Serbia is uh, keeping them out and is maintaining the uh, sanctions that it has imposed since the um, Declaration of Independence. Hopefully, uh, with the mediation of the European Union, this can be overcome. The other thing is something for the Kosovo authorities themselves to, to solve, and that is the international reputation that Kosovo has, which is tarnished uh, by uh, corruption and, and organized crime. However, over the last four years, you never used your corrective powers. Were they so good then not to use them? Why didn't you use them? Look, I, uh, two reasons. Uh, first, my stakeholders, you know, I have to account to 25 uh, important democracies were unanimously um, reluctant to see me use uh, my corrective powers. And, um, you know, if I had resorted all of a sudden to a written decision to sack a minister or to uh, invalidate uh, a piece of legislation, I think I would have had a very difficult time to explain this properly. Why? Because it sets a bad precedent. We have seen how it works in Bos Bosnia and Herzegovina. And it doesn't motivate the local political elite and the elected leaders to assume responsibility themselves. But the second thing was perhaps even as important, and I think that I myself was, was reluctant to, to take this step if it was not really necessary. And there was no real necessity to do so. By and large, the institutions were compliant and remained compliant with the Atasari um, process. Uh, not everything was to our satisfaction, so I rather opted for a continuous process of, uh, of persuasion, pressure, together with the leading embassies here, uh, here uh, around. And you know what? Um, this was seen as a major success of the four and a half years that I uh, was the international civil civilian representative here. You said that the stakeholders didn't want to use the corrective powers. Do you remember a moment when you actually wanted to use the corrective powers and what was that moment? Um, First, uh, let me also say that I used affirmative power. So I, throughout the four and a half years, I have made many appointments, positive appointments, uh, in key positions in, in, in the Kosovo system. Um, I think the moment was, uh, had to do with um, my wish to see a greater success in the drive against um, top level uh, politicians who had connections with uh, corruption and organized uh, crime. And I think it is disappointing to see that we haven't uh, seen more, more results in that, in that field. Uh, we have the EU-LEX rule of law mission 
and a lot of investigation has, has uh, been um, undertaken. A lot of files have been opened, um, but it has not really come to uh, indictments. And where it came to indictments, um, no, uh, no verdict was was uh, was uh, um, decided by by the judges. And um, I think that was disappointing. I, th I would have liked to see uh, the, some some high profile cases being brought to a conclusion. And it's not only me who would have liked to have seen that, but I think the, the great majority of the Kosovars would have liked to see it as well. Were you disappointed with other, uh, other sides of, of ULEX? What about other work that ULEX has done here? Well, the work, the work is extremely complicated, very complex. Uh, and, and I've mentioned this before, society is a very close society. It's sometimes difficult to find the witnesses. Um, EU Lex is composed of judges, prosecutors who come from different legal traditions and, and systems. Uh, common law system or the, the more continental system. And sometimes that, that, uh, that provides a complication. But I think that EU Lex is, has made progress. Um, we see now that the focus is narrowed down to the judiciary, which needs further reinforcement. And the extension with another two years is helpful for EU legs to, to make further progress and hopefully to complete the job. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that you insisted several times to close down the ICO office here and to end the mission of the ICO here. What, what, which were the reasons to close down the office here in Kosovo? Was it because of the plan was already implemented or? The plan was substantially implemented and where it was not implemented I uh, had reached the conclusion that I didn't have the, uh, the additional, the, the, the comparative value um, to, uh, to remain in, in, in operation. To put it in a different way, I th thought that others in the international community were better placed to deal with the situation in the north, to deal with uh, the uh, uh, rule of law situation, organized crime and corruption, uh, than I was. And I think that one of the things that I consider as very positive is that there is now a smooth transition between uh, the closure of the ICO and the European Union assuming um, uh, greater interest in exactly the same priorities as were uh, laid down in the Atisari uh, plan. For the EU in its feasibility study and in the progress report, you see the same headlines like community rights, um, freedom of the media, privatization, uh, as you see in the other side plan. So there is a, a, uh, there is a, a fleeting uh, transition which I think is, is very positive. And of course, the United States of America remains very strongly engaged in, in Kosovo as well and is. is uh, advising uh, the government. Mr. Fight, from your perspective, how do you see the political stance towards Kosovo? Is there a chance for productive dialogue, political dialogue, which is about to start, between Belgrade and Pristina? On both sides, you both find, sides. On both sides, you find um, a, a lot of um, um, resistance against any idea of dialogue with, with the, the opposite side. In, in you find it in, 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 in Serbia as much as you find it in Kosovo. You've already mentioned the self-determination uh, movement. They are very f vocal and very active, um, not only in parliament, but unfortunately also in the streets to make it clear that they are uh, against uh, dialogue. But I think that there is a, a growing consensus here uh, among the, the, the main Albanian uh, parties that dialogue is, um, is not only um, in inevitable, but it's also uh, beneficial to Kosovo. And um, what I would like to see happen uh, is that there would be some uh, form of unity among the leading uh, political parties to support the dialogue uh, idea, which would give greater margin for 
uh, creative uh, uh, negotiating to the governments uh, without the government being um, attacked and sniped at uh, in the back by the opposition. So if there is a broader support, this could, this could be beneficial for the dialogue. In Serbia, of course, the situation is slightly different because now the nationalistic uh, uh, parties are in the coalition in power, so they have relatively less to fear from uh, hardline uh, opposition to dialogue with, with Kosovo than the previous president and the pre previous government. So, all in all, um, I, I think the, the, the future is, is not without hope. Um, both Serbia and Kosovo are very keen, I, I would say, to, to move closer to, to the European Union. And this provides leverage to the, to the European Union to bring this dialogue into uh, full play. And I hope that this will happen very soon. When I, at least my perception of when I read the Atisari plan, the document overall, is that he gave the rights to all communities here, the maximum rights were granted. However, he stops just an inch shorter before making Kosovo a dysfunctional state yeah. with the rights of the vetoes. Do you think that if further concessions are done to the north of Kosovo, Kosovo could become a dysfunctional state? Well, I think so. There is, and certainly uh, there have been attempts in the past uh, by Ser uh, Serbian negotiators to come up with proposals that would uh, in effect mean uh, uh, making, making uh, Kosovo uh, dysfunctional. The idea to uh, create an entity like in Republika Srpska with the right to, se uh, to secession and the associated plan to provide extraterritoriality to the uh, Serb Orthodox Church properties in the south would make it impossible for Kosovo to be properly uh, uh, governed. And this is not uh, only a concern, of course, would be a concern only to Pristina, but also for the European Union. How can the European Union work with um, a, um, a, a state that aspires to move up the access accession uh, ladder while being totally dysfunctional. That, that would be impossible. So that, those solutions, I hope, will be discarded now. And what we need to look at is our solutions that uh, make it possible for the governments in question to, uh, to each declare victory. It's as simple as that. So, on the Serb side, there must be a disclaimer that this doesn't mean recognition. And on the uh, uh, Pristina side, there must be a uh, assurance that this doesn't mean the uh, viability, the end to, to the viability of Kosovo as a state. And, and part of this is uh, that there should be no partitioning of the north, that there should be respect for the uh, the border or, if you wish, boundary lines that uh, now exist um, and that there should be no violence anymore um, and that the hardliners um, must desist and must be brought to justice where, where, uh, where necessary. Only last week we saw again that shots were fired uh, against the police. So I think you see that the in the coming negotiations, and this will, this will uh, not make it easy, that uh, you very soon reach the limits of what can, uh, can be accepted by either side. And you very soon reach uh, the point where, as you said very rightly, um, this would make uh, the whole project of Kosovo's independence um, a, a problematic one. And for the end, what kind of memories will, be, will you be taking with you now that you'll be leaving Kosovo? Well, I thought this was <coughs> a unique experience um, because the birth of a young nation um, in Europe is not for every day. Um, and to help in, in state building is, uh, is very much a, a, a governance task, more than a diplomacy task. And I think we have achieved quite a bit uh, over the past four and a half years. Uh, Kosovo has, has now consolidated its institutions and uh, the responsibilities have been uh, properly transferred. So I, I look back with a certain uh, amount of satisfaction. Um, I'm pleased with, with uh, the personal context and I will regret missing my, my friends here. 
I would have wished that uh, also with with uh, with Serbia and my former Serb friends, I would have come out a little bit better. But you can't have it, you can't have them all. So um, maybe that's for later. Thank you very much for the interview, Mr. Faith. Thank you very much. Always. We ask the question: What is in the world?